Welcome to all of you tuning in today to our service here at Prince of Peace Lutheran Church. I'm so glad that you have uh, tuned in today. As today we'll be observing our Good, Su uh, Good Shepherd Sunday here at Prince of Peace, where the reading, the gospel reading is from John chapter 10 and that familiar account of, of Jesus saying that he is the door for us as the sheep. And you'll hear it in the message today of the importance of having a shepherd a shepherd to guide us through life and to be with us uh, through this life, but also, more importantly, to be the, the, our shepherd who came to be our Savior. And so as you hear that message today, I hope you'll be blessed. Also, if you were joining us, uh, if we were as normal worshiping today, it would be the first of the month uh, praise service here at Prince of Peace. And so I hope that you will enjoy the songs today and sing along with. And so if you join me now in a word of prayer. Gracious Lord Jesus, we gather now today, um, even though we are apart, to worship you. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this opportunity to be able to hear your word and lift up our prayers and our, our praises to you, even in this capacity, to know that, that Lord Jesus, that you are our shepherd and our Lord, who's come to, to be our shepherd through life, to guide us and direct us, but, but also, more importantly, to come to be our Savior, to lay down your life and sacrifice so that you would be that door in which you tell us that as we enter by you, we'll be saved, that we'll go in and go out and find pasture. And as we hear that, that comforting and important message for all of us today, I ask you that you will bless this service as we pray this in your name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in singing, Come People of the Risen King. begin now with our invocation. Nay, the Father and Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Let us come before God today in true repentance, seeking forgiveness for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. We take a moment for silent reflection for self-examination. We confess, Almighty God, we confess that we are by nature sinful. We have done the evil you forbid and have not done the good you demand. We do repent and are truly sorry for our sins. Have mercy on us because of Jesus, our good shepherd. Grant that by the working of the Holy Spirit, we may follow where he leads until that time when we, by his grace, come to dwell in your house forever. We now sing together the Kyrie. God has promised forgiveness to those who repent of their sins and turn to Him for grace, seeking that forgiveness through Christ. Therefore, as a called ordained servant of Christ and by His authority, forgive you all your sins this day in the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you'd join me now in, in speaking together the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness. For his name's sake, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You repair the table before me. In the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have wakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit, that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name, and follow where he leads. The same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now listen to our readings. The first reading is Acts chapter 2, verse 42 through 47. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers, and Awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number, day by day, those who were being saved. This is the word of our Lord. Our second reading is 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 19-25. through 25. 
For this is a gracious thing, when, mindful of God, one endures sorrow while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if, when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to who, him who judges justly. He himself bore our sin in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were strained like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of our Lord. We now listen to our gospel for today, which is from John chapter 10. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. He will go in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. At this time, you will witness a, a children's message through a puppet show. Oh, I'm so excited to go to the park. Hey, do you see that? Yeah, it's a sheep. I wonder what a sheep is doing in the park. Oh, yeah, it looks so sad and lonely. I wonder if he wandered away from his flock on that hill over there. I had heard about sheep doing that. They will get so busy eating their grass that they will just wander off from the rest of the sheep without realizing it. Poor little lamb. It's why they need shepherds. I know. I wonder where its shepherd is. They should have been watching it. Boy, am I thankful I have a shepherd who never takes his eyes off of me. What do you mean? You aren't a sheep. Are you feeling okay? Do, you need to, do I need to take you to the hospital? Stuff is going around these days, I hear. No, I'm not sick or crazy. I'm talking about what I learned in Sunday school. I learned how a man by the name of Jesus is like a shepherd, but for me. I also learned about how sometimes I can be like a sheep. When I don't listen to God's words like I should, or do things I shouldn't do, it's like I'm a sheep. Sheep can find themselves in trouble when they don't have a shepherd, or if they don't listen to his voice. You mean like the time I went to the state fair with my parents? They told me to stay close to them, but I didn't listen, because I had just, I just had to check out that stand full of cotton candy. I love cotton candy. I wandered off and then I couldn't find them. Thankfully, they found me very quickly, but I was so scared, if only I had listened. I did the same thing when one time I didn't listen to my parents about jumping on the bed, and I fell off and I broke my arm. I guess I was trying to be a monkey and a sheep. But what I learned in Sunday school is that even though we don't always listen and do things we shouldn't do, Jesus is like a shepherd who never gives up on us. He came to die on a cross to forgive me when I have done wrong and to be there for me when I feel lonely or scared. He says if I listen to him through his word and believe in him, he will always watch over me and help me. One day he will take me to heaven after I die where he says I'll never be lonely, 
hungry or sad like this sheep ever again. Wow, that sounds pretty good. Maybe I need to learn more about this shepherd Jesus. He is pretty awesome because it says in the Bible he even came back to life after being dead. Who do you know that has done that? I was told in Sunday school he did that so I can go and live with him and all my family who has died believing in him forever. It is a real comfort in my life to have that kind of shepherd. Certainly sounds like it. Well, how about we help the sheep get back to a shepherd? Good idea. I can't bear to see him lost anymore. Neither can Jesus. Let's get him home. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The basis for this message today is the gospel lesson just read a little bit ago from John chapter 10. In my ministry, I've heard people say this phrase more than once through the years. People say, I don't know how people do it who do not have Jesus in their life. It's often a phrase that I hear from a congregation members through the years when they're going through a difficult time and yet they are so thankful that they know that they're not going through it alone that jesus to to pray to know that he's with them through that difficult time and to give them strength and peace and comfort they say those things because they don't know how people can go without that assurance in their life yet i know you know Many people that are going through that today. Millions of people in this world that are going through life without much thought of God or Jesus in their life. I wonder how those people are doing today, Pastor. Maybe some of you out there that are listening to this, maybe it's kind of been the case with you through these years. You've been giving a whole lot of thought to, to God and Jesus now we find ourselves in this time. This time in which, you know, the, the earthly props that we put so much security and, and, and trust in of, and peace. So many of them aren't coming through for us in the same way today. Aren't being as reliable. You know, we trust in the medical community that they're going to solve our, the problems that we face in our health. But here this virus says them in a place where they still have not come up with a way to fully prevent and eliminate 
this disease. You know, we look to our government in many ways. We trust them to take care of us in hard times. In many ways, they do. But yet, can they grant us all what we need sufficiently to prevent us from losing businesses or jobs or to go through hard times? Getting the answer today, aren't we? Maybe you've kind of been relying on, on yourself a bit. You've had all these plans for, for your future. You set aside, you know, what you needed for retirement and for the future. What happens when the best laid plans of ours all of a sudden are cut out at the knees through circumstances that we can't control? This, this virus that no one saw coming. What happens when all those earthly plot, plot, props that we maybe put our trust in give way? Where do we turn? Well, I'm here to give you an answer today especially for those of you out there that maybe haven't been giving much thought to God in your life. It's the answer of what we need. Shepherd. Shepherd for your life. To have a shepherd who's, who's with us through the difficult times of life. A, a shepherd who's, who's promised us that he will is, calls us by name. And through him we have the promise of a future that we can't even remotely conceive of. That shepherd is Jesus. For today is Good Shepherd Sunday. Today I'm here to tell you again why having Jesus as the shepherd of your life is so important. First of all, when we have Jesus as the shepherd of our life, we have someone to guide us through it. You know, our reading from John reminds us of that, from John 10. We have the image of Jesus being that shepherd for us who follow him. An image that he draws from how they did shepherding in those days. Jesus begins our text by saying, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hears, hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Jesus brings, us up, brings up this image of a, of a shepherd here referring to himself. Because the Old Testament prophets spoke about this shepherd to come who would be in the line of King David, who would be the Messiah. King David spoke about the, the Lord and called him shepherd in, in Psalm 23. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is called our shepherd in Psalm 80, verse 1, where it says he is the shepherd of Israel. Jesus is telling us through those words that he came to be that long-awaited shepherd. The shepherd who can enter by the door. You see, Jesus is drawing on the images of, of how shepherding worked in his days. See, shepherds it, towards the, the end of the, end of the day would bring their, their sheep to what was called a sheepfold. And there would this, be this gatekeeper that would let them in and their sheep in, and then he would watch over them through the night. The sheepfold was a, an enclosure with walls as, as high as 10 to 12 feet. And they had this door that you would enter. And there, there the sheep would stay through the night with this gatekeeper watching them. And then in the morning, the shepherd would come. And being recognized by the gatekeeper, he would let the shepherd in. The shepherd then would have his own distinctive call that only his sheep knew. But a shepherd who really cared for his sheep is more than just numbers, would name them all and call them each by name. He would then inspect them and make sure that they were his. And then he would lead them out through that door of the sheepfold, out in the pasture as they followed his voice. It would be an important function of the shepherd for the sheep because sheep, as we know, need guidance. Maybe you've heard stories about sheep who have walked off of cliffs, not paying attention while they were grazing. In fact, in the country of Turkey in 2005, there was a flock of 1,500 sheep that one day, following their lead sheep, just walked right over the cliff. 
while the shepherds were eating breakfast. Now, only 400 of them died because the other 1,100 <laughs> fell on the soft landing of the other 400 sheep. Imagine the shock of those shepherds that day. It said that they probably lost $74,000 on those sheep, all because sheep need guidance. They need protection. And they took their eyes off of their sheep. When we look at our lives, it would be easy to see how we can get caught into, and get into a whole lot of trouble, too, without a shepherd guiding us or at least not listening to his voice. You maybe have heard Jesus say in his word, that if you, brother, you remember that your brother has something against you, go and first be reconciled with him. And even though you maybe knew those, those words, instead, in, in a time where you remembered somebody that had something against you, you decided to remain stubborn and, and did not admit your fault, it led to a family feud that's caused you problems ever since. What you decided was the cliff of that strange relationship was preferable to just admitting your fault and asking forgiveness, and you're paying for it now. You may remember Jesus saying to turn the other cheek, to love our neighbor as ourself. Or maybe you had somebody that, that wronged you in some way. Instead of doing that, you sought revenge. You harbored that anger. And put a rift in your marital relationship or friendship that's still going on today. All because you chose the cliff of bitterness and anger over Christ's call to forgive and love. If you notice, we as sheep are quite naturally can get ourselves into all kinds of trouble when we decide the voice of the shepherd isn't worth listening to. Or when we maybe don't even have it in our life. However, when we listen to the voice of Jesus, it helps us avoid some of these pitfalls in life as he calls us by name to follow him because he knows what is best for us as his sheep and he will not steer us wrong. He will guide us. That's why having Jesus as our shepherd is so important for our life. But yet, the second and greatest importance of Jesus in our life is when we know when we have our shepherd Jesus, that we have a Savior for those sheep light, not so bright moments of our life when we, like sheep, have gone astray. As Jesus goes on to say, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters through me, they will be saved. They will go in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. Is Jesus telling us through those words, not only did he come to be the good shepherd for our life, to guide us and lead us, but also to be, he came to be the door into the green pastures of our Father's kingdom of heaven. That's why Jesus later said, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. His words are so important. It's all those times of sin in our lives when we didn't listen to Jesus and his words are warranting us more than just trouble on this earth, but a perishing future future where there will be no soft landing. We step over the cliff of this life in death without him as our Savior, without him as our shepherd, without his grace and forgiveness. It would be a future of pain and agony, troubles forevermore, God's word tells us. However, Jesus came so not only that we would have a guide through this life, through the difficult times of this life for him to be with us and guide us through those times, but when we do face the precipice of the valley of the shadow of death ourselves, his grace and the forgiveness of sins we're offered through him becomes then that solid bridge to cross over to the green pastures beyond. He says, all who enter by me, enter meaning by, by faith, be saved. They'll go in and go out and find pasture. 
It's like in a recent uh, kids movie that my family watched, a movie called, by the name of Onward. There was a scene in which this, this, this boy is able to walk across this cliff. Now, he, he's, he's do, he does it by magic in the movie. But for you and I, crossing over the cliff of death to God's green pastures won't happen by, by magic like in the movie, but by the invisible hand of our Lord Jesus Christ. He'll take us. He'll lead us across. He'll lie down in the green pastures of our Father's kingdom. Lie down beside those still waters. Restore our soul. So it's promised us in Christ. He came to be that door, our gate, our bridge into that future salvation. We first receive that down payment towards that salvation when we were claimed by Christ, were named by Him, purchased by Him in our baptisms. Then we receive further assets towards that future when we confess our sins to Christ and He forgives us. I get to speak to you as a pastor of those words, I forgive you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit because through the authority of Christ to be able to say those words to you. You receive those assets towards that future every time you come to this table and you believe that Christ's body and blood, you are receiving His body and blood for the forgiveness of your sins. When you are led to see Christ as your Savior from sin and the shepherd of your life, you have the promise. Our Lord will restore your soul. Have eternity with Him. You'll be claimed from the grave, restored, rescued from perishing, and live abundantly with Him. We're in that place, there'll be no more worries about bills, worries about income, worries about jobs. Worried about illness or, or viruses or the troubles of this life. But only the sweet comfort of green pastures. Never-ending, abundant life. Who can argue with that future? Who wouldn't want a, a shepherd to lead us there? And thanks be to God, our God of His grace provided it. As Jesus came for you and me so that we can have that future and that hope. And I can't imagine going through life without that hope. And I hope that you won't either. Amen. May the peace of Christ transcend all understanding. Guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Now at this time, I hope you will enjoy the music as we look at the uh, slide about offering. I am Jesus, little lamb, ever glad at heart I am. For my shepherd gently guides me, knows my need and well provides me, loves me every day the same, even calls me by my name. If you join me now as we confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed, we confess, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If you now bow your heads in prayer with me, as we pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, for all people according to their needs. Let's pray. Blessed Shepherd, you came, dear Jesus, to be the shepherd who would lay down your life for us in sacrifice, so you might become for us the door through that forgiveness into your Father's heavenly kingdom. Help us to always see our need for you as our good shepherd to guide us and lead us through life. 
and more importantly, to be our door into that kingdom. Work in our hearts a repentant, steadfast faith in you, keeping us faithful to your gifts given us in our baptisms. Who might rejoice one day in the future heavenly glory you have promised us through our faith and trust in you for our salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty shepherd, you hold in your hands all the might of man, and you hold accountable those who would govern your people. Work through our governing authorities and, and our leaders right now that they might fulfill your purposes, protect your people, and serve the cause of justice. Give them wisdom and discernment, especially to how to handle this pandemic crisis. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Shepherd Jesus, you love the world enough to shed your blood, and you desire that all would be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Inspire and equip your church and her ministers to speak faithfully and boldly your word, and bless all those who serve us on your behalf. Bless especially all the ministries of your church around the world, our missionaries, our universities and seminaries, all our parochial schools and all our districts and synod, that they might continue to receive the resources needed to bring the saving message of Christ as you are a good shepherd to the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Shepherd, you continue to pray. We pray, continue to pray for your strength and resolve for all those living and working through this virus. Shield them from illness themselves and use them to be a part of your saving care and love for your people. Also continue to, to use us as your church to be a part of that plan, to meet the needs of those who are ill and in despair from the trials of these days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Shepherd, you were, your wounds are healing, and your voice calls us to you in time of need. Hear us on behalf of all those who suffer in body or mind or who grieve those whom they love or whom death draws near. Especially pray for the following folks from our congregation who need, and friends and family of our congregation who need your, your mercy and, and help from above. We pray that you might grant that to, to Ruth Weinstra as she recovers from her fall. We also pray that for Joyce Schomer. We also pray for Terry Lynn and for Daniel, for Lisa and Harvey and Deb, for Lindsay and Steve, Diana and Glenn, for Carolyn and Lynn, Danielle and Rachel, Lee and Teresa, Ellen and Jamie, Clarissa and Caroline, Brian and Matt, Nancy and Ryan and Lois. Lord, you know each of their needs and ailments, so we pray that you'll give them strength for this hour. We also pray for those who continue to battle with cancer. We pray for Dale and Jenny, for Jeff and Graham and Daxton. Pray for those who are recovering from cancer, Joe and Lucy, Kennedy and Carrie, that you might grant them continued success to their treatments. We also pray for our shut-ins, Lord, especially uh, in this hour of, of, of their need, that you will keep them safe and strong in this time. We pray for Audrey and Lil, for Lenny and Doyle and Elsie, for Lyle and Ron and Dolores. We also pray for the, for the father of Lisa Lampshire, Glenn, as he is in the hospital uh, with heart complications, we just pray, Lord, that you will help him through this time and lay your healing hand and strength upon his heart. We also, Lord, pray for Viola Miro, who has been recently diagnosed with the virus. We just pray, Lord, that you will just grant her your comfort, you'll grant her your peace, Lord, as you've given her and worked in her heart a strong faith by your Holy Spirit to believe and trust in you as her Savior, that you will just lead and guide her through this, this valley that she is in, in the shadow of death, and that, Lord, you will lead her home to call her to her heavenly rest. And so we pray all of this today in your name as our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we uh, continue now. If you'd please join me in praying our Lord's Prayer together. We pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thine kingdom come, thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the blessing and peace of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and gracious to you. Look upon you with all of his favor and give you his peace. We now close with our closing psalm, song, Psalm 23.
Goodness will lead me 